Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner and welcome back to Mr. Lehner's Math Extravaganza. In today's webisode, we're going to jump into Investigation 4, which deals with using percent and calculating tax. So we're going to build upon what you've learned in Investigation 1, 2, and 3, and now apply it to some real-life situations that you as sixth graders have probably already experienced, even if you think you haven't. But what do I mean? I bet a lot of you have gone out shopping for clothes or have gone to the mall or have gone to the store to get a candy bar or have gone to a fast food restaurant with friends. You can actually take what you know, use your smartphone if you have a cell phone and figure out the total cost of your items with tax included. So what do I mean by all that? Let's take a look at an example and see. In our first example, the Hazel Green Hornet Soccer Club sells hamburgers and chips for $3.99 at their games. There is a 6% tax rate. What will the total cost be if a student purchases a hamburger and chips? As we solve these problems, there are multiple ways to solve this. Um, as we get into variables and patterns next unit, and as we work through this investigation, you'll probably start to come up with an algorithm to solve any type of problem uh, that involves this tax rate in here. So, as we start off, though, it may be a few different um, ways that you try first before you find out what works best uh, for you. So let's take a look at this example. What do I know? I know that for a hamburger and chips, it costs $3.99. And I know that there's a 6% tax rate. And percent means, oh yeah, out of 100. So it's 6%, which means it's 6 out of 100, or is a decimal, 0 0.06 uh, is what I would write it as. My decimal. So I'm going to walk you through one way that you could have possibly have solved this problem. I would start with my original price, which is $3.99. I'm going to multiply that times the tax rate. Now, this is a really important point. You can write this one of two ways. 6, I can write as either 0.06 or I can write it as 6%. So when I'm actually typing this into my calculator or my phone, I can't do it both ways. I can do it one or the other, either 0.06 or if I'm gonna type it in like uh, with percent, I would put six and then make sure you actually hit the percent button um, when you type that in. So 3.99 times 6% is gonna equal 0 0.2394. Well, what in the world does that mean when I'm talking about money? Hmm, well I know usually in money there's only two spots after the decimal point, so I can round this to the nearest cent, which would be the hundredth place value. So I look at the three here, I look at the nine, ooh, I can round this up. So this can become uh, 24 cents. So I took this decimal here and I made it 24 cents and that tells me what? Oh, that tells me the, the amount of tax I'm gonna have to pay on my purchase. So I know a student's gonna have to pay $4.23 because I took $3.99, which is the original price, and I added the tax, which was 24 cents, which is going to equal $4.23. So because I knew the, the price and I knew the tax rate, I could actually figure out the exact total uh, that I would have to pay for um, this hamburger and chips. Now, the algorithm, some students may bring this up, or you might be thinking about this at home. This can work for any problem like this. You can actually take the price times the tax, plus the original price again, and that's gonna equal your cost. Now you might be looking at me like, but I have five heads up here, like Mr. Lander, I have no idea what you're talking about up here. This is a way that I can plug it in to um, work it out. So let's look, our price was $3.99. So I plugged it in, times the tax. So instead of writing 6% this time, I'm gonna call it 0 0.06. Close my uh, parentheses here, because that's gonna come first. Plus the original price, which was $3.99, and that is gonna equal the cost, which I know is gonna be $4.23. So again, following our order of operations here, if I multiply those two together, I know I'm gonna get that crazy long decimal again here, so I would round it up to 24 cents because that's my tax, then I'm gonna add the tax plus the price, which gives me $4.23. If you're really confused right now, that's okay. The more you practice the skill, the easier it will become, but that's an algorithm you can plug to solve any type of um, tax problem when figuring out the actual price uh, that you will pay. All right, good news is now it's your turn. 
and I've given you guys a doozy of a problem to try. Jen and Jason go to the candy store to buy some candy. They have $10 to spend on candy, so I know how much money they have. If they buy king-size candy bars for $2.49, $3.79, and $3.29 with a tax rate of 8%, will they have enough money? Um, how do you know? So, of course, you got to show your work and explain. I mean, I always ask you guys to do that. So, before you get started, look at what you know and look at what you're trying to find out. Go ahead and make sure you got your smartphone or calculator ready, paper, pencil ready to go. Go ahead and pause the video. We'll see what you come up with. Okay, think about what you did earlier. There's a couple, actually there's numerous ways you can solve this problem. I'll show you just one possible way. Yours may be different at home and that's okay. Let's take a look. First thing I would do is I'm gonna add up all my prices. So I added up each one of the candy bars and I know that that total was $9.57. Okay, well I need to find out how much tax am I gonna pay. So I can multiply $9.57 times 8% or 0 0.08. Um, and that's gonna give me another crazy little decimal over here, 0 0.7656. I can round that to 0 0.77. So this tells me the cost of the candy is gonna be $9.57 plus the tax of 77 cents, which is gonna equal $10.34. So I know that Jen and Jason do not have enough money because they're gonna be short by 34 cents. Then we have $10. They don't have enough money because they weren't calculating in the tax that they were going to have to pay for the candy bars. Now, if you're wondering, is this a reasonable answer to the question? Well, let's think. 8% means what? 8 out of 100. Let's so think of like 100 pennies being a dollar. So for every dollar that you spend, you're actually paying 8 cents as tax. So if I bought an item for $1, it cost me 8 cents. $2, 16 cents. $3, 24 cents. So if I bought an item for $9, 9 times 8 cents would be 72 cents. This is a little bit more than $9.5, so my answer would make sense. If I said I'm going to pay $7.66, well, my tax would be outrageous. If you remember the video we watched with the clerk making a decimal point error, that's the same thing. You want to be able to know and just say, oh, you know, sure, you're right. I'm going to pay $7 even though my total bill was only you know, $9.57 before tax. So, Again, check the reasonableness of your um, answer on here. You could have also turned this into the algorithm that I showed you earlier. You could have done 9.57 times the tax plus 9.57, and you're gonna get $10.34. You may have to round up your um, number in there. You may have done it a different way uh, as well, but you're still gonna come out with $10.34. Thank you for turning into another wonderful edition of the Science Math Extravaganza. As always, We'll see you next time.